Okay, people, back from the farms. Uh, I was having some hissy fit with some lady over raspberries. So, anyway, I went to a different store. I wanted her, the first one, I wanted them to wet, weigh it, you know, and she was, anyway, long story short, I ended up going to a different store, and I guess I missed the big sale where they had a whole bunch of these flats for $12 because these raspberries have kind of come to their time. So they're very, I'm going to try to move slow here, they're very, very ripe. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, obviously you have to go through them, check for mold and that type of stuff, right? But I'm going to go out and pick some of my raspberries, and I'm going to pick some of the ones that aren't so ripe, a little sour. Andre, please, Andre, please. <laughs> Anything to make noise. And add them in there just to make it a little more tart, right? Because, you know, the riper the berry gets, the more kind of bland it becomes, right? It loses its bite. So anyway, I got four boxes of blueberries at $20 a box. So you can see what I'm going to do is people are already starting in here and getting in there. I'm going to dehydrate one box anyway for sure to start with. So uh, strawberries were not available to buy. They were too expensive. He said maybe come back next week at the other store. They might have some local strawberries. So I'll go back next week see if there's some strawberry for strawberry jam. Apparently the season for strawberries this year wasn't very good. The few little strawberries I had growing in my yard I tend to agree. Although raspberries in my backyard have been like flourishing, like, like the every ads. day I'm coming, Daddy. every day I'm coming in with a bowl like that, people. So I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna pick another bowl of raspberries. I'm sure they're gonna um, be. I'm I'm talking. I'm sure there's gonna be half a bowl to a bowl, which I'll add to this batch here. And like I said, I'm gonna pick some some of the ones that aren't so ripe to add some tart to this, right? And I'll probably might even have to add a little bit of lemon when I'm cooking it up. I don't have a recipe yet, so I'm gonna find one. And then uh, this little plant here. No, I'm talking. This little plant is a wasabi plant. A summer plant? Wasabi. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> it smells good. So I'm going to put it out in the yard and see what happens. No, okay, my little grandson wants to talk about his blueberries. Because I, was, I, I like them. You like them, eh? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have a blueberry plant in the front? Uh, yeah. But it doesn't grow as many as this. Well, they're they're growing, but they're not as ripe as these ones, eh? Huh? Yeah, I want to show you something. You want to show it, me? This is not right. No. Throw that one in the pot. You can go with there and be cooked. Cooked oh. with the raspberries. Just throw it in with the raspberries. It'll be fine. Pot full of raspberries with one little yeah. blueberry. Okay, people, so now I'm getting on to this raspberry jam. I got this flat for $10. These things are extremely ripe. They were selling flats, I think, nine pounds for like, one store was selling it for 30, and they were starting to look kind of old, and I wanted her to measure them out for me, and she got all attitude and everything, so I left and went somewhere else, and where I got these ones for $10 for the flat, because they were coming to, you know, they're fully ripe, you can see. Um, the guy sold it to me for 10, but his regular flats, nine pounds or something like that, same kind of thing, was 40 bucks. So I went from 30 to 40 to 10. So I got all that there for $10. But these are very ripe. But because I have raspberries growing in my yard, I'm battling with the hornets to get to them. I picked up some ones that are not so ripe, right? Uh, because there will be a high in pesticin. The riper they get, the, I think the pesticin kind of, I don't know, it's not as, as strong, right? So in the old days when people didn't have lemons, to add to their food for you know jam or whatever to bring up the pestin level the acidity I think that's what it is they would take un the unripe berries and add it to the jam that's what they used to do so I didn't pick tall green ones as you can see right but these are tart if you eat them they're tart if you eat these, these are bland because they're overripe. And these aren't ripe enough. It was very sour. So I'm going to mix the two up. And that's how I'm going to make my jam. Hold on. Okay, so what we got is 15 cups of berries. The uh, berries from the bush out in the back there, I think it worked out to almost three cups. 
two for sure. I don't know. Andre was doing something in there. So we'll just throw it in as a cup. So three cups of the ones from the back and the rest of them. So anyway, it was 15 cups of berries. And then I calculated it out where, you know, you got nine cups of berries to six cups of sugar. We had 15 cups of berries. So one bag of sugar, right, was 10 cups, which I needed for that. I know I bought this little bag of sugar for $2, people. And the raspberries I paid for was, what, $10? So, so far, this thing is only costing me $12. Hmm. And, of course, lids. But these are old lids. Right. Can you see? That's a box from way back in the day. Never been used. Okay, I just tasted this, people. Oh, it tastes so good. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Let me taste it again. You want to taste it again? It tastes really good, doesn't it? Hey. What is it? Good, eh? Uh huh. Mm hmm. Okay, so I went out in the farms, right? And anyway, I know where to get three, that's enough, three um, kgs on, like, for honey. Right. So, maybe next time, not this year, maybe maybe halfway through the year or something. Because honey is a lot more expensive. For a three kg, it's like anywhere from $35 to $60, right, depending on the type of honey you get. Uh, and I where, and no. And depending on the type of honey, where you get and what kind of honey, you, you know, where you get it and what type it is, right? But for now, we're just using plain old sugar, right? Because, uh, like I said, this 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 whole batch here costs me $12. That's it. And then as you're starting to cook this stuff up, just get your jars washed, put them in the water, in the canner, start heating them up, getting them ready, right? Because as soon as this is ready, you're going to empty out your jar hot, put it there, start filling them up, and then put them back in there, put the lid on it, boil it for 10 minutes, with the lid on, like bring it to a boil, put the lid on, boil it for 10 minutes with the lid on, and then turn it off and then let it sit for 5 minutes, lift off the lid and then take out your jars. Right? So we're going to see how many, we're going to see how many jars of raspberry jam we get for $12. That's now? Yeah, that's the raspberry jam. Yeah, I, I mm -hmm. now got me ice cream. Yeah, I got you ice cream yesterday too, didn't I? Yeah. And then after this, what are we going to make? Blueberry jam? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to make some blueberry jam. Mmm. Yeah, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to have to move away from the pot now because once this starts to boil, it's going to start spitting. You can take the spoon with you and lick it. You can have it. All right, people. Okay, people. Seven jars plus this one I didn't seal, but it's going in the fridge. And this little bit for 12 bucks. All that for 12 bucks. That's not bad. And it tastes really, really, really good. And you can see it's a nice consistency. So now, we're going on to blueberries. Okay, people, so now we're on to the blueberries. I washed them, took off the little stems, right? We'll try to get most of them anyway. And then what you do, smash them up. Uh, again, I'm just going to cook those up, right? They're a little green, but that's okay. It just, what it does is it just adds tart and more acidity, right, in terms of pesatin. Yeah, he's he's having a shower. I'm talking. Okay, people, so on to blueberries now. Uh, wash them, pick out the little stems. Right, this is, I'm doing a box. I don't know how much it's going to get me. But this is a box right here. Again, this, this stuff, even though they're green, put them in there, it's okay. Because what it is, is going to be tart. It's just going to add a little, it's like a lemon, right? And they're high in pesatin, which is like... I don't know if it's the acid, like, it, I don't, I really don't know what pesitin is, personally, myself. I just know that in the old days, when people didn't have lemons, and they wanted to preserve their fruit, this, the raw, the, the more unripe berry is what they added to the fruit if it was overripe, right? So anyway, I'm not going to waste that, I'm just going to cook it up with, with it all, right? So I'm going to start mashing this up, and then we're going to do the same recipe, nine cups to six cups of sugar, and we'll see what we get. Hold on. Okay, so I kind of filled up this pot a little bit too high. It's going to be flying all over town in here. By the time you're done, there'll be jam everywhere, right? That's the way it works. So it was, what, 18 cups of berry that I ran through a blender. 
because it was kind of like a plum. I couldn't use the masher, the potato masher, and you want it to be fine, right? So I ran it through a blender, and um, so 18 cups of processed berry and 12 cups of sugar, right? And then there's a little bit of berry left, you can see. So I didn't even use them all, people. So the box itself was 20 bucks. So we're going to put that at maybe 50 cents in berries I didn't use. So 19.50 in berry, approximately. And maybe the sugar I got on sale for those little bags were like $1.99 each. So that's why I'm saving money here, right? Hoarding that sugar, you know. And so anyway, we'll put the sugar at 225, 250, so 1950, 20, 22 bucks. So 22 bucks, and I'm still using the other seven or just you know the, the, the little lids. You have to factor in you got to buy the lids, but that I didn't use them all, right? So we're just going to say 2250. This is what it's going to cost me to make. I don't know how many jars of blueberry jam. So for $22.50, we're going to see what we get. But this is awfully full, so I'm going to bring it to a boil. And I'm not going to bring it on a high boil for a very long, because this is too high. This is a little more than what I had before, and it's going to fly all over the place once it comes to a high boiling point. So what I'm going to probably do is turn it down just a bit on the knob there, right? Welcome to YouTube and the amateur video maker. Anyway and then maybe give it an extra five ten minutes cooking time right and we'll see we'll just see how it goes because I can't boil this on high it will be all over the place and if you notice I got my sweater on <laughs> okay so I got the heat now on seven because this thing whoa, was really starting to come up the pot right just don't panic and it was really foamy which is normal but you just keep stirring, right? I'm not using pestin, I'm just using sugar and berry. That's it. Right? And I threw in those little green berries in there, so that gives it that little extra assist, you know, acid, acidity, right? As a preservative. And, uh, so, you know, you see it's a, it's, a, it's a low boil. That's not really high enough, but I have to boil off some of the foam right because it was just rising up higher so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up it back up to almost between eight and a half well it's between eight and nine right so it's at eight and a half on the knob there for temperature wise and you just keep stirring right and now because it's at a full boil it's now rolling with the boil the foam is all gone this is when you start timing in 15 to 20 minutes because that's all it should take to make the jam thicken enough for it to become jam. Right? 15 to 20 minutes on a high boil, but you have to keep stirring it and it's going to spit everywhere. It's going to go on your stove, on your stove over here, over there. It's going to go on the floor. It's going to fly over here. You know, so you can cover up yourself with it you know a shirt or something right I'm holding the camera so after that what I'll do is I'll pull down my sleeve and cover my hand because I'm really not in the mood to get burnt right now because this when this stuff starts to fly it flies but because this pot is double batch um, you know it's gonna fly even more because it's so high up on the rim here I'm just going to give it a little more time to heat up. See how... I'm just kind of testing the limit here, right? Because the higher that you can bring it to a boiling point for that 15 minutes and keep stirring, the more success you're going to get your jam to congeal. I think that's what they call it, congeal. It's to gel, right? Congeal. I'd have to look that up, people. Right. So it seems to be handling it fine, so we're going to turn it up to 9. I know 9, whoa, <laughs> got to watch this camera. Next thing you know, it, my screen won't be working. And you get the moisture in the screen. This one here, 
I dropped, I was out in the yard and it was in my purse and I was spraying the grass or something and the water got into my purse and I didn't even stop to think about it. And four hours later I went to go grab the camera and turned it on. The bloody thing wouldn't work. You know, I'm trying to, the screen wouldn't work. It turned on, but the screen, you know, the touch screen wouldn't do anything. So my daughter said, oh, you know, just take the camera and put it in a bag of rice, Mom, and leave it there for a day, 24 hours. So I did. I put the camera in a bag of rice. I covered up the little part there where the video for audio picks up the sound. I just put a little piece of tape on that so the, you know, the dust wouldn't get in there. And uh, put it in the middle of a bag with some rice and covered it up. And got up in the morning. Actually, it was in the daytime when I did that. And it was starting to, within a few hours, it was already starting, the bag itself was already starting to, um, what do you call it, get condensation in it. So I opened up the bag, let it air out, let, let the condensation evaporate out of the bag, closed it back up, kind of put it semi in the sun. I didn't put it directly in the sun. And then I left the bag open for a little while. And then I closed it. And I don't know. And finally, I just got antsy feet and wanted to check it, and I checked it, and sure enough, my camera worked. So there you go. You drop something in, in you know, one of these electronic things, don't underestimate dry rice. <laughs> it absorbs the moisture from, from the, uh, the pads on cell phones and um, cameras. Yeah. So we're at nine now. You can see the boil is getting up even higher, so I'm going to turn this off and just pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay, people, so it's done now. As you can see, you can always tell. <laughs> Pretty tasty. Okay, people, it's a few days later now. These, these have been sitting on my counter for like two days, two and a half days. Mm -hmm, these are jams. This is blueberry jam, and this is the raspberry jam. We got seven and seven, okay? But before we carry on, because I got, I'm, I'm going to do a little food blog. I guess that's what you call it, right? Because I got a lot of food I got to process. Hold on. I got a lot of food I have to process over the next three, two, three, four days. I'm going to do pickles. I'm harvesting the red kale from my garden. It's been actually some sitting on my porch for the last day and a half that I've got to get up on and start dehydrating anyway. Some of it, the stalks, you'll see. But before I carry on with that, I wanted just to mention that after you've done your canning, you know, obviously I'm, 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 I'm you know, stressed out with stuff going on every day. And sometimes I forget, but this is important. Try not to forget it if you can. After you've done your canning, Please do not interrupt. Please do not interrupt. I'm talking. Okay, anyway, I'm back. Oh, I'm talking on the camera. Okay, I don't know if you can see this. But you see, I didn't wipe this jar. Because sometimes I get so dispersed with things around here. Always something going on. And the house is small, right? Like I said, these things have been sitting here for like three days almost now. After I've done them. So, and this one here was canned last year. This is tomatoes from my garden from last year. Because what happened was my son, my oldest son, opened up a can of um, asparagus, right? That I did in July of 2013. And I explained to him that, you know, if it's down, there's a very high probability that everything inside the jar is good to eat. Although, botulism can live in a vacuum sealed environment if it's in the container. That's why they recommend that you boil this for 10 minutes at least before you eat it <clears throat> as a 100% measure to make sure that you don't, you know, poison yourself with botulism. Anyway, he opened up a jar and you can see the lid here. Right? Because I didn't wipe this one down. Let's see if we can find it. Can you see it? There you go. But that doesn't mean that the food inside is spoiled. Right? So when he opened up the jar, it was quite rusted. Right? And this was getting rusted. 
Because you have to remember these things when you're doing it, beans and whatnot, it's in the pressure canner, right? This is water bath. I don't know if I did that in a pressure canner or in a water bath, but either or. I didn't wipe the rim, obviously. You can see that. But uh, he ate him because he ripped this off. He said he didn't hear a vacuum seal, but then I don't know. He was using his teeth or something. I told him, don't do that next time. Especially if, you know, the rim hasn't been cleaned, right? <laughs> And he ate he ate the asparagus and he drank the juice and he's still here and that was about a week ago. So um, just as a reminder, after you've done your canning, take off your rims, wipe it down. Oftentimes I like let it dry thoroughly, wash your rims, let them dry air dry thoroughly, put them. I, I they say you don't have to, right? Um, it, but sometimes I have to stack my boxes and I just put them back on. In this case, you can see I never even took them off and washed them. But that's not to say that the food is bad. You just have to look to make sure that it's still sealed. Look for any discoloration, foam, you know, foul smell when you open the jar. Listen listen for that vacuum seal, right? That's why it's best to use a little can opener or a knife or something, not your teeth. Don't use your teeth <laughs> like my son did. Right, and so anyway, this is going to be a food blog today, and so we'll be back. Hold on. Okay, people. See this beautiful young woman here? That's my daughter. <laughs> She's going to do some modeling for me. Oh, my God. Mom. Serious. <laughs> okay, people. So since we're doing a food blog here, this is two days. Not picking. And I've been picking. Hey, you can see it goes all the way to the back over there. And then the blackberry bush, I don't know, it's it went wild this year. Like this thing is full of berries, like full of berries. I, I don't think I've ever seen it have this many berries before. And it's behaving itself so far, it's staying on that side of the fence. <laughs> so, anyway, I have a little hornet's nest that's, I don't know if it's underneath in the wall with the styrofoam or if it's down in the ground and I'm allergic to these things now oh my god there is one right there he's just watching me where is he see him there's something in there so I bought a new nozzle and a, oh I gotta go okay there's some red kale from the garden I am going to actually cut it out a couple days ago. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do it like I did with that bok choy. It's actually pak choy. It was P-A-K choy. So I don't know what's the difference between pak and bok. But anyway, I'm just going to slice these. I'm just letting I just washed them, rinsed them off again, to pat dried them, let them air. I'm going to let them air dry completely. All right. And then uh, there's some raspberries. I get a bowl like that about every two days. Yeah, probably gonna get another three or four more bowls. So this year got a lot of raspberries, people. And then we'll just cut these in half, put them in some wax paper, and wrap it up, put it in a plastic bag, and I'm gonna freeze them like that. And then the ends, I cut them off, and I'm gonna dehydrate them. So we'll be back. All right, people. So this is how you do it. Just like with the bok choy, wash, patch the leaves down, let them air dry for a bit, take them, cut them, and then put them in the bag. Right? And or you can just do it this way. Put them in a wax paper like this. Right? Not the and, the and then wrap game. it up tight so and then the put it in the bag. Okay, people, so I think I'm going to call this video the food foo bar. <laughs> anyway, here's some red kale ready for the freezer. I did it exactly like I did the bok choy. And then I'm going to dehydrate the ends, if you can see, just like I did with the bok choy. Here's some raspberries I picked today. I'm freezing these ones, but the next batch I'm going to start drying. 
I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it to the farms to get any more raspberries, blueberries, or get strawberries, but either or, we still have six jams, seven, seven, seven jars of raspberry jam, and seven jars of blueberry jam. And then my daughter, my youngest daughter, was trying to clean up the basement last yes, yesterday or the day before. I don't know what she was thinking, but she threw out a whole perfectly good jar of salmon because she looked at it and she says, hmm, doesn't look right. But that's because it shrank in the jar when I processed it, right? That's not your normal can salmon jar, right? So it's still fine, though, eh? So we rescued that. Got some coconut sugar. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Some turmeric. This thing, this is a little plant that these things can grow in my yard, so the lady said, so we'll see. And then there's the tomato. I wiped down the lid, put the date on it. I'm going to be making some pickles here, people, so be back tomorrow. Hold on. Okay, people, next day. So this is the red kale from my garden. That's the stems with a little bit of green leaf. The rest is frozen. I did it just straight up without blanching. Sliced it, dried it, washed it, dried it, let it air dry, sliced it, rolled it up in uh, paper wax, and then put it in a plastic bag and another plastic bag. And then for the stems, for the most part, and a little bit of the green, I dehydrated. And as my red kale is growing in the garden, which is growing like mad, I will continue to do this. Now... We're going to be making pickles today, but before I do that, I have to get this going again, and I came across one, two, three, four, five, six bags of ginger that I'm going to take the time to peel now, <laughs> all of them, and dehydrate them, and it costs me six bucks, a dollar a bag. That's not bad. A dollar a bag, you can't go wrong with that. So... In terms of other things, because this is a food food bar, I bought a few things for storage. This is Punjabi, uh, South Asian, unrefined cane sugar. It has its own taste. Uh, there's different kinds here. You can see this is a little lighter, different colors, right? I don't know if you can see that. But they're different colors. So I bought one of each. They weren't that expensive. I think something like this was like $1.49. So I'm going to taste it, obviously it has a different taste, and I'm going to remove it from its plastic and probably put them in some sort of a glass container of some sort for long-term food storage. Whether I use them or not, if, you know, worst case scenario happened and an earthquake came along and damaged the infrastructure of this city and I needed something to barter with. There's a lot of South Asians. I'm sure, you know, at some point somebody might really appreciate this if, if for some reason I can't cook with it myself. Okay. And then I bought some kosher salt to make pickles. So we're going to be doing that very soon. And this is something I bought last month. I haven't used it yet. It's, again, South Asian. Here's something else. I have to look this one up online. <laughs> right, you know, we'll see what happens there. We got a little cider vinegar put back in storage because I've got some other ones I have to use. Here's a little coconut here, and I've got some other coconuts because uh, one of the members that watched uh, my um, YouTube videos, uh, members and friends, right, people, uh, suggested that I start maybe doing something more with coconut to help with the coma that I'm struggling with. And then I bought a little thing of red palm oil here just the other day. You know, I'm kind of stressing out, right? These are food dyes. What I like about these ones, same store as where I bought this stuff, right, is it's in powder form. So this could last forever. It's food coloring, right? They asked me, well, what are you going to do with it? I said, well, I'll use it for icing, right? Make you know, cake, right? Icing, it's food coloring, why wouldn't you? I don't know what they use it for all, but... Anyway, then I found downstairs, as I went to go get the ginger, nice three big wine bottles for food storage. So they're all dusty, so I'm going to wash them inside and out, let them air dry. And I will probably have enough of these to store up, seal, and then look for the other one that I did in 2011, 2012 find it, pull it out, and replace this one, and start using the other one, right? And, and this is long-term food storage. For six bucks, we'll see how much we get. 
Hold on. Okay, people, that's six dollars worth of discounted ginger. I just finished peeling it. Took a while. <laughs> Here's the peels. There's two trays. This is actually quite deep. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sun dry it over the next several days, and then I'm going to run it through a food processor of some kind and make either smaller pieces for the chickens to eat maybe or I'll make a powder where I might use it as a bug killer or something hold on okay people so as you can see two pounds of sliced ginger I'm going to try and pickle this okay people look at that old school appliance <laughs> Think about that. Uh, one of my thrift store moments. Oops. I bought this a long time ago. <coughs> this is ginger, people. I don't know. Okay, people, next day. So this is the red kale from my garden. That's the stems with a little bit of green leaf. The rest is frozen. I did it just straight up without blanching. Sliced it, dried it, washed it, dried it, let it air dry, sliced it, rolled it up in uh, paper wax, and then put it in a plastic bag and another plastic bag. And then for the stems, for the most part, and a little bit of the green, I dehydrate it. And as my red kale is growing in the garden, which is growing like mad, I will continue to do this. Now, we're going to be making pickles today, but before I do that, I have to get this going again, and I came across one, two, three, four, five, six bags of ginger that I'm going to take the time to peel now, <laughs> all of them, and dehydrate them, and it costs me six bucks, a dollar a bag. That's not bad. A dollar a bag, you can't go wrong with that. So... In terms of other things, because this is a food food bar, I bought a few things for storage. This is Punjabi, uh, South Asian, unrefined cane sugar. It has its own taste. Uh, there's different kinds here. You can see this is a little lighter, different colors, right? I don't know if you can see that. But they're different colors. So I bought one of each. They weren't that expensive. I think something like this was like $1.49. So I'm going to taste it, obviously it has a different taste, and I'm going to remove it from its plastic and probably put them in some sort of a glass container of some sort for long-term food storage. Whether I use them or not, if, you know, worst case scenario happened and an earthquake came along and damaged the infrastructure of this city and I needed something to barter with, there's a lot of South Asians, I'm sure, you know, at some point somebody might really appreciate this if, if for some reason I can't cook with it myself. Okay, and then I bought some kosher salt to make pickles, so we're going to be doing that very soon. And this is something I bought last month, I haven't used it yet, it's again South Asian. Here's something else. I have to look this one up online. <laughs> right, you know, let's we'll see what happens there. We got a little cider vinegar put back in storage because I've got some other ones I have to use. Here's a little coconut here, and I've got some other coconuts because uh, one of the members that watched uh, my um, YouTube videos, uh, members and friends, right, people, uh, suggested that I start maybe doing something more with coconut to help with the coma that I'm struggling with. And then I bought a little thing of red palm oil here just the other day. You know, I'm kind of stressing out, right? These are food dyes. What I like about these ones, same store as where I bought this stuff, right, is it's in powder form. So this could last forever. It's food coloring, right? They asked me, well, what are you going to do with it? I said, well, I'll use it for icing, right? Make you know, cake, right? icing it's food coloring why wouldn't you I don't know what they use it for all but anyway then I found downstairs as I went to go get the ginger nice three big wine bottles for food storage 
So they're all dusty, so I'm going to wash them inside and out, let them air dry. And I will probably have enough of these to store up, seal, and then look for the other one that I did in 2011, 2012. Find it, pull it out, and replace this one, and start using the other one, right? And, and this is long-term food storage. For six bucks, we'll see how much we get. Hold on. Okay, people, next day. So this stuff is dehydrated, looking really good. You can see that. Moving like a snail here, haven't really accomplished very much. There is boiled water in there because when you're pickling, you kind of want to take out the chlorine. Some people say buy like the distilled water, whatever. I just boiled the water yesterday, put a lid on it. Um, so this is unchlorinated water in there. I've been like on YouTube looking at videos. I Googled all kinds of recipes for... Um, pickle ginger and pickle cucumbers and I'm really not too sure what I'm going to do and then I'm going to the cookbooks you can see right so anyway long story short I never got around to pickling that last night so I rinsed it off and I put about a tablespoon or so of pickling salt in there because I'm just drawing on everything that I've read or seen and I'm going to try and create my own pickle ginger which I am going to can in a water bath under a pH level of what you would do for a beet or a ginger root by itself with the extra vinegar added into it to bring up the acidity level of the pH of the vegetable right are you listening <laughs> so that it, you can it safely whether you use a pressure canner <clears throat> or a water bath and in this case <coughs> excuse me I'm going to be using a water bath because the pressure can, the ginger might be too much on the ginger, and we're already using the vinegar, so that kind of compensates for the lack of the pressure cooker, right? And then I've got that over there, which I might just go through it and sliver off a few pieces and make the kind that you don't can, right? And uh, as I was reading for ginger making, pickle, pickling ginger, they want to... A lot of these recipes are calling for rice vinegar. This is the only one I have. I've had this around forever, so lucky me, right? Okay, so we'll be back. Okay, people, so just remember here, I'm making my own recipe. I'm taking everything that I read and everything that I've seen, and I'm just going to whip it up. So we're going to use a beet. That's why I'm talking about the pH level of a ginger, and the beet are almost the same when it comes to canning, with or without acidity in terms of vinegar okay if you were to can this without vinegar you'd have to do it in a pressure canner if you can it with vinegar you can do it in a water bath same is true for ginger I would assume because the pH balance of the vegetable is very very close to each other 5.6 or something like that anyway I am starting to taste this Pure sugar cane, unrefined. Alright, you can see this one's not so bad. I took a little bite out of this one. This one was kind of gummy, so I don't know. I, I'm going to settle with this one here. Pulled out some, again, this is this is brown sugar. It's another cane sugar. It comes from one of the Punjabi stores I shop in. It's actually quite good. And I had that in there, which is another cane sugar. So what I've done is I've slivered off about maybe two tablespoons. Okay, I'm making my own brine here, okay? And I, I know my taste buds, and I kind of know my kids' taste buds. So I would think the more I can make this sweeter versus saltier, Hi, the more successful this will be as a Hi, side dish for sushi. Now I'm taking the this sugar, and I have no, eight... Wait. Quiet! I have eight little jars... That's the goal. I basically packed in eight, so that's how much we have left. This will be a different batch. That's enough for two larger jars, which I'll use probably the rice vinegar for that. But for this one, I'm going to treat it more like a beet or a pickle, and I'm going to use white vinegar, only I'm going to make it more sugary versus salty. Plus, I'm going to add in a tablespoon or so of molasses, and I'm going to taste it. And then we're going to fill up the jars, put the brine in there, and then I'm going to hot water bath it. So hold on. 
Okay, so yeah, members and fans, that's right, Andre. So, so here's the deal. Because this sat out in a bowl last night, I just put a plate over it, and because it was already discounted, kind of older ginger. Technically, when you're pickling gin ginger, the Japanese, they like to use the, the fresh, very fresh and young baby ginger. But this is just, you know, ginger, right? Um, you know, it gets a an earthy smell to it because it's a root. Now, I already put a tablespoon, sorry, of salt, and it's been sitting like that for... Oh, I don't know. Maybe, uh, for about an hour and a half, two hours as I'm trying to get ready here. So what I'm going to do, just because it did sit out for the night, I'm going to rinse it under cold water. I'm going to do this a few times. I'm going to give it a good rub. Okay. I'm going to strain it. Do this maybe two times, three times, just fast. And then I'm going to take another tablespoon of salt after I drain it, strain it. And I'm just going to rub the salt in there with my hands back and forth like you would have pet a, de pet a head trying to rub the lard into the flour. And then I'm going to rinse it. And then based on what I've watched, right, on YouTube and read, I'm going to take some boiling water and I'm going to blanch this quickly for one minute before I fill up my jars and then add the brine and then you're going to see how I'm going to do that and then I'm going to process it. Alright, so we'll be back. Hold on. Okay, so I'm just doing some logistics here. Uh, you know, I'm trying to make the solution, right? So what I did is I took one of these little jars, which is about, what, a quarter pint, right? Because I'm thinking, you know, like being thrifty with having sushi in the house if we make it for ourselves, right? And what you want to do is when you get it in the jar you want to make sure the brine is over over your uh, pickles or your ginger or whatever you're pickling so in this case that would that would be fine so I put some just plain old water in there because I'm trying to you know multiply it by eight times because I got eight jars okay so we will just put that in there and we'll just kinda see approximately how much brine we have to make I can't seem to really find a measuring jar around here. I have them, like these little glass measuring things, but anyway, it's coming in at, you know, that's about a quarter of a cup to a third of a cup. I'll put it in a cup and I'll kind of get it down to more precise measurement. It's not really coming in at 50 grams on there. I think that's what that would be. So you get the gist of what I'm doing here. I may not put that much sugar in each one, maybe just half. Right, Andre, can you please? Okay, so anyway. And then over here is Pickle Mania, which is coming up next. This is going to be the one with the rice uh, vinegar, right? But this is, this is old stuff from a couple years ago. <laughs> I never did pickle anything, though. And then I bought some new spice. You can see how the bay leaf is nice and green in that one yeah. and in here it's kind of turning brown so I don't know this one's not so bad yeah, this one doesn't I'm talking please I'm not talking about marshmallows this one here you can see it's got a little bit of peppers and stuff this one here I don't know what this is even there but anyway uh, stuff I've never used I got a great great plant grapevine in my yard with my neighbor so instead of using this I think I'm going to use grape leaves for this, for this crispy part stuff, right? So anyway, I just want to remove this. Got some fresh bay leaf, and uh, there's dill in the fridge. So hold on. Okay, my friends. Okay, members and friends, this is what we're doing. Now I was talking. <laughs> okay. It's, it's what are we doing? Well, we're sterilizing some jars right yep. now. They have to boil in the water for yeah, ten minutes. Yeah, and we make you pickles. Yeah. Right now we're just gonna make ginger pickles. Yep. But we're making them sweeter, so what I've done is I've looked and up in here, up here. I talked about that. And uh, I think we're going to make pickles off those. Mm-hmm. What about this one? That's sugar. For what? For our ginger pickles, because we want ours a little sweeter yeah, with a little bit of bite. Oh, Nana was just... So, people, it works out to about a quarter cup per jar after you fill up the jar. So, I'm doing the math right now. So we're looking for two cups of brine, but I'm going to make three cups to be on the safe side, right? So what I've done is I've taken this recipe right here, just for 
<clears throat> basic beets, right? Andre, be careful, this is a stove. And I've taken the numbers here, three and a half cups of distilled white vinegar, one and a half cups water, two cups of sugar, and I'm omitting the synonym, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. And basically what I've done is I've divided it by two, right, to get an approximate amount of almost three cups of liquid, which I'm coming close up to in here, about two and a half, right? Two and a half cups, because it works out to one point, well, one and three quarter cup vinegar, three quarter cup water, one cup sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt, which is what I would want. And then, of course, I'm going to probably throw in a half a tablespoon, taste it, and then if I want, I maybe put another half a tablespoon, like a half, like a, I'm going to either do a tablespoon or a half a tablespoon of molasses, right? And then I'm going to just sprinkle in a little extra of that sugar just to give it that crystallized caramel taste. Because you have to remember, this ginger is very old and it has a very strong bite. And uh, so anyway, we'll be back. Okay, people, so I've been boiling this water for about 15 minutes to evaporate the chlorine. No point in blanching something with chlorinated water if you're going to use unchlorinated water in your brine, right? And I'm treating it like a pickle. So here's that ginger that I'm just going to take and empty it into the bowl, stir it around real fast, give it a one minute to boil, just, you know, 30, 60 seconds or whatever it is, and then I'm going to put it in the strainer. I've got this. You want to use a non-reactive metal, right? You don't want to use aluminum, especially when you start fooling around with vinegar. And then we've got our cap starting to boil. Jars are ready to go. Uh, here's that sugar. I ended up using this one here, which is a cane sugar. And then the other cane sugar. And then at the very end, we're going to put a couple of those in there. We'll see how it goes. And then we're going to put a couple of these at the bottom of the jar to give it that pink color. These are not cooked, they are uncooked, but I would assume once they hit the, the canner, they will be fine. Okay, so as you can see, hasn't started to boil yet. As soon as it starts to boil, that's when I'm gonna give it at 60 seconds, right? Okay, so pick up any minute and then I'm gonna transport it into here and then I'm gonna start pulling up the jars and I'm gonna start filling them in hot. Okay, so I got a moment here. I just put one slice of beet at the bottom of the jar. That's for the coloring, right? Okay, so I don't know if it's going to work because if you notice the broth, because I used the brown sugar and the molasses, the broth is turning dark, so it's not going to really matter whether you see pink or not. Um, in terms of broth, this and brine, this is more nutritional, right? But we're going to put it in there anyway and see what happens. If I would have used white sugar and nothing but white sugar, it would be a different story and you'd probably get that pink. Because it's an old ginger, it's not going to turn pink. And uh, I'm saving this boiling water to do the same type of thing when I get into the second batch of this stuff. So hold on. Okay, so that's where we're at in the game right now. Uh, I can actually see the beet already starting to bleed its color. I know you can't see. Well, maybe you can hear people. If you can see how the beet is already coloring the liquid, okay? That's why I put the beet in there, all right? That was uh, some other YouTube um, channel that did that. Only she didn't can hers like I'm canning mine. Okay, this I'm just kind of concocting together on my own time, to, to time right? Because I want mine for long-term food storage. I don't want mine just sitting in a fridge for anywhere from three weeks to six months. I mean, you, there's too many variables in there. Unless I knew for sure that the kids were going to eat it. So anyway, as you can see, I put the liquid in there. What you want to do is make, oops, sorry. Make sure you take out the air bubbles. I'm not sure if I like the packing method with it flat along that way or if I like it this way. This way is kind of cool. I can still put a couple more in there once the liquid got in there. Oops, sorry, wandering eye. All right, you want to take out... Take out those air bubbles before you process these things, okay? And then, so just, you know, stick it in there, move it around. It gives it a chance for the liquid to drop down. As you can see, that one's already dropped, so I can add a little more in there. I see bubbles popping through, right? Just kind of give it a, see what I'm doing there, so the water can go down in between the crevices. Because this one is packed, I packed these ones quite full because I'm trying to use 
my math here in terms of eight jars with looks like I'm gonna have more more solution more than a half a cup maybe than what I was guesstimating hard to say anyway we'll be back okay so in terms of the extra sugar if you do your ginger this way it falls in there nicely that's in chunks there people I would think that once it's in the water bath it's going to dissolve but either or here it is again so what I'm going to do right just kind of move it off to the side here right you can see that okay here's some more right okay I filled up the jar to about a quarter inch I mean we don't know until we try these things these things might pop it's hard to say okay so now I'm going to put the lid on and clean the rim one just one more time put the lid on and I got four more jar well three because it only can seven so hold on okay people so this is the moment of truth remember when you screw on your caps only finger tight don't screw it up too tight because the air has to release as it's coming through the water through the boil right otherwise your jar will just crack right so keep that in mind uh, waste not want not so I got one more little jar to do I factored in I have just enough ginger there for one small jar you can see that and then I've got that other ginger I don't know where it is sliced I was going to use it with the uh, rice vinegar but being that this is old ginger anyway and we're trying to be thrifty I think what I'm going to do is just continue using the same brine right only I will use the larger jar I'll use one half pint one quarter pint and then one half pint I think that's what they call it one of these two of these okay so two of these and one of those that should be enough liquid sorry if you're looking the camera around so in the meantime this is going in the water make sure you have extra water so that when you put it down the water is like one to two inches above in boiling water and with the lid on I'm going to process for 10 minutes because these are small little teeny weeny jars right okay so as soon as I put down the rack it started to boil there's enough water in there covering the lids right if you really wanted to you could just add a little bit of boiled water just to top it off okay once it starts coming to a full boil that's when you start counting your minutes so we're going to start the clock whoa clock timer 10 minutes oh I don't know what the heck that is timer I just want timer 10 minutes with the lid on okay oops you put the lid on and then you start make sure your lid is on this might not be the right lid for this canner it looks like two different canners but that's okay all right and then start your timer 10 minutes boil take off the lid after that let it rest for a few minutes and then take it out and go on to your next batch so I'm gonna get the next batch ready okay so 10 minutes is up take off the lid just let it cool down for a couple of minutes you know two three four five minutes whatever it is then you take them out you don't move them around just try and take them out straight I'm talking bring them over here and let them pop but uh, before I can carry on, so we're going to blanch this batch because I already told you yeah. it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, discounted ginger, right? So it sat out for a night, so we just want to make sure everything's good to go. Are we going to make pickles? Yeah, next is pickles, but Nana's back is really starting to hurt. So I don't know. I got to put chicken in the oven first. No, I don't and talk. I have to boil up these jars I washed in there in the sink over there. Okay, what do you want to say? A t-shirt's going to take me swimming. Oh yeah, you get to go swimming. Okay, so jars are out, already starting to pop. As you can see, the beet is bleeding. Its color, whether it permeates the ginger remains to be seen. Sorry. Here, I'm just blanching. Again, it's coming to a boil, you can see. I just stuck it in there. Whoa, sorry. Just stuck it in there just a couple of seconds ago. Now it's going to come to a boil, so I'm going to give it about 30 seconds or so. You know, no more, no longer than a minute, right? So, there you go. And before I can can, though, I should, and I'm going to sterilize the jars. So these got to boil for at least 10 minutes. Once they start boiling, you boil for 10 minutes and then fill up the jars. Hold on. Okay, so now I'm outside. This is the peel, people. I am sun drying it for the next few days. And then I'm going to grind it up in a blender 
break it down into smaller pieces. And some of it I'm going to use for chicken food. They're either going to want to eat it or they won't. It doesn't really matter. And it's an antiseptic, so it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit scattered around my yard. And then I'm going to blend some up as a powder. And I may use it as an aphid killer in a spray bottle. I just couldn't justify throwing it out. So we'll see. Okay, people, so that's the rest of that batch. Uh, I'm not going to put extra sugar in this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one from here that has the extra sugar and then this one here that doesn't. And then maybe in about three weeks from now, I'll open up both jars and we'll have a taste test and I'll make some sushi. So I'm going to process these for 10 minutes. Let these ones sit in the water for maybe another three, four minutes more. I'll pull those ones out a little sooner, right, you know. That's it doesn't need 15 minutes. It's going to be sitting in vinegar, right? Okay, and that's all I have left for liquid. So that, I'm just going to throw in some pickle jar. This ginger, I'm just going to rinse it off, shred it up, and dehydrate it. Because I'm kind of tired already. Like I said, my back is just going off the roof here in terms of spazzing. So, I still have to throw a chicken in the oven. It's 7 o'clock at night, and it's extremely hot in here. And I'm going to try and do a couple, two, three, four jars of pickles, assuming that the um, cucumbers are still okay. I don't know because I bought them a couple of days ago on discount, so I really won't know until I bring them up. So I'm going to do this food bar food situation here in two-part videos. So after this, after those jars are there, I'm going to upload this video, and then I'll work on the pickles, and that will be food bar food too. Okay, so that's it. Here's my little wasabi plant. Do you see that? I have to build its own bed. It's a, it likes to live in Japan, in the mountains, along the streams, within uh, the mountain mm, river rocks. So I have to kind of give it its natural environment. So that's another day. Anyway, that's a little wasabi plant. And then this is something that my daughter got from a Chinese restaurant that makes really good uh, Chinese food out in Surrey. It actually took root and it, you can see it's got some roots on it, right? And it flowered everything there. You can see the little flowers on it. And then it got tucked behind the other plants and I just put some water in it now so next couple of days we'll get them in the ground. Okay, so there's those four jars. These ones here with the extra sugar. These ones not, right? So let me get on and I'm gonna go convert this and upload it and start getting on with the chicken and the pickles. Okay, so after it's all said and done, this is starch from the, you can see the little white in there. It's got starch, right? From when I was shredding that ginger in that machine there. Right? And then the juice as it was sitting in the bowl and everything. Right? There's a little bit of salt in there. From the last batch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain it and then I'm going to use it as a bug spray, diluted. Okay, so now I'm making a little bit of stuffing for the uh, little chicken I have. This is some poultry seasoning. I'm just old stuff been kicking around forever. White breadcrumbs, a little bit of shallot in there, two cloves of garlic. Okay. I'll throw a little bit of salt in there after the fact. All right. And then uh, that's an egg with a little bit of evaporated milk. Okay, so on to pickles. This is the discounted pickles, dollar a bag. That's why I bought them. I got some other ones in the fridge from the farms when I went out to the farms. These are nice and hard, crispy. I can feel it because they've been sitting in a bag downstairs in the fridge. All they have to do is be cleaned up, right? Not too sure what I'm going to do with them yet, people. Hold on. 